Hi, I am Brie Homa. Um, I am one of the CVTs for ECC. Um, and today we're gonna be doing just a brief demonstration on how to manually express a bladder. And we have our sweet boy Bond here who's gonna be helping out. Um, it, for this patient, he doesn't actually need his bladder expressed, so we're likely not going to get urine, but we are gonna be talking about um, where you're going to be looking, feeling, uh, what type of pressure you're gonna be applying, and all those good things. So, are you ready? He's a good boy, yes you are. Okay, um, the first thing uh, is that you need to know your patient. Um, some patients are going to be really resistant to this and other patients, this is gonna be really easy. Um, and so kind of gauging how you need to address each individual patient is gonna be important. Um, some patients are gonna require more pressure, others are gonna require less pressure. Um, some patients are gonna find this really painful and may react and it might not be successful. Um, and so it's really important to just read their body language and be able to know what's gonna be best for your patient uh, because there are other things that we can do if we need to empty their bladders. Um, so first thing we're going to do, um, unless you really enjoy having uh, urine all over your shoes, I highly recommend having some sort of a potty pad or a thick towel um, that's going to catch it. Um, there are two ways to express their bladder. I mean, I guess you could technically do all kinds of crazy gymnastics, but the two main ways are if they're standing or if they're lying on their side, those are the two easiest. Um, I guess you could get pretty crazy and do it upside down if you really wanted to. But so for this one, Bond is gonna be standing and I would put the, obviously his prep use is back here. Um, we'll be looking for that rib cage and then you're gonna go to where his hips come in. And sometimes on the thicker guys, it's a little bit harder to find that waistline, um, but we're gonna go right, see my hand is coming off of the rib and going right in front of that leg there. And I'm gonna be doing the same on both sides using flat hands, because um, anything that you do with pointing your fingers or um, doing any of this is gonna be really unpleasant if you're pushing your fingertips together. So once I find that general area, I'm gonna start doing a gentle palpation. And when I'm palpating, I am pressing first in and then up a little bit in order to locate that bladder. And your bladder is gonna be different sizes um, depending on how full it is. Um, it could be, and it's also dependent on uh, what size patient you have, right? So a cat could have a small bladder that's, you know, the size of a really large musket grape. <laughs> <laughs> um, or it could be as large as like a tangerine or something like that, depending on how full the bladder is. Um, in a dog like Bond, he could have a really small bladder. In this case, um, he went out recently to go potty, or if he is somebody who he has pain and so he's having a hard time posturing to go potty, or he has some other um, issue that he's having with actually urinating, his bladder could get up to you know, this big. And so uh, we want to be conscious of what we're feeling for. We're gonna start light with our, pr with our um, pressure in order to make sure that we're not just going in there gung-ho. Um, so like I said, we're going to be pressing in and then up, okay? So we're gonna be going dorsally in order to try and find that bladder. And depending on how big it is, you might find it right away. And if it's smaller, you might need to bring your fingertips a little bit closer together. <laughs> then once you locate the bladder and you wanna make sure that it is the urinary bladder, cause sometimes the kidney can be a little bit deceiving depending on how cranial you are. Um, and so you wanna make sure that what you're feeling feels round and it's not, an awkward kidney shape um, and that it's appropriately sized for your patient and also knowing their anatomy where it is. Once you locate the bladder and you feel it, then I'm gonna press in and bring my fingertips together gently. And sometimes depending on how strong their abdomen is, how resistant they, <laughs> they are and how strong you are, um, you might be shaken a little bit and that's okay. Um, but I'm gonna give it a good shot. And if you see, this is about as hard as I'm gonna push on Bond. He's allowing it, he's not resisting me, he's not acting painful, he's not spinning around. And I'm making sure to keep my fingers nice and flat like that as I'm pressing in so that I'm not digging my fingernails into him. But that's as bad, but 
as much pressure as I'm going to give it. And then you can make sure that you have, I have the bladder and I'm feeling it right in between my fingers here as I'm compressing. Um, and so if he's going to pee for me, that's when he's going to do it. Um, and if not, then we can reevaluate. Um, sometimes your DVM might feel that it's more appropriate to use a little bit more pressure. Um, or if you've expressed them before and you know that it requires a little bit more pressure, that's okay. Um, but we, we are really trying to avoid applying an excessive amount of pressure that can cause damage or pain. And then in cases where they have large bladders, we don't want to rupture them, especially in cases where they might be urinary obstructed and the urine doesn't have anywhere to go. So thank you, Bond. Easy good boy. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs>